Jonathan Papelbon joining us right now on FT Live, friend of ours. Pap, how you doing, man? You've been popping up in the news quite a bit lately. Did you know that? No, I, I don't read the newspaper. <laughs> Good, because you're on Twitter, and I know you've seen your Twitter fire shots all over the place. Um, wh- where do we begin here? Hey, I'll tell you what. I just learned something from the old foul territory. What? I didn't realize this, the Mariners were owned by Nintendo. They long were. time ago. Not, Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. They were a long right. time ago. Yeah, Nintendo sold. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now it's just this single dude that he used to have Mario run around cash. the field and shoot fireballs at people. Pap, he missed <laughs> out. <laughs> hey, so Pap, I actually want to start on um, what you wrote about Giancarlo Stanton. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think that he can rebound? I mean, he's been in the league for a while. Uh, have, have you watched him? No. Okay. W- what are you seeing? Obviously, he wasn't moving well in the field last year, and, and obviously the swing and miss was was brutal, but. Why, why do you shake your head so emphatically? You don't like the changes that he's going to try to make this offseason? No. You can't, you can't reinvent the wheel later in your career. It just, it just to me, it, it doesn't happen. You don't all of a sudden become a speed guy. I mean, it, I mean, it, AJ and Eric will tell you, the older you get, the damn slower you get. Um, so, to me, um, you know me, man. I love to fucking gamble. So, as soon as that home run line comes out, I'm going under on Stanton, and I'm putting a load on him. And there's to me, it's a win-win. Um, and it's not direct. It's I think Stanton's a great player. I'm not. I'm not trying to take anything away from Stanton, but dude, you're trying to you're losing 20 pounds, and I'm just sorry. Uh, mass equals gas, and mass equals home runs, in my opinion, baby. Yeah, but it's not like he's going to – he's not going to be a – you know, he's not going to run the Boston Marathon. Like, he's still going to – if he stays on the field, he's got 35 dingers in his pocket right now. Side bet, and, me and you. Huh? <laughs> me and you, side bet. I told, I told you before. This is why I didn't come to the back of the plane. I can't touch Papelbon's <laughs> money. Like, I can't touch Ocho Cinco Casino. Well <laughs> – Ocho. Either my, one. My, my whole thing was, is I, and, and, and I said this because I tried this shit. I tried this. I tried, in fact, I, I tried it. Me and Bobby Jinks tried it one year. And we we're like, hey, man, let's let's get in like really good shape and let's lose some weight. We can, you know, be healthy all season. That shit didn't work, man. I, my velo went down. I was like, man, I'm going back to putting on weight. And I played at 235 and to me, that was a great weight to play at, and that was what I was used to, and that's what helped me throw gas. And so, to me, later on in your career, man, I, I just – I saw that, and I was shocked, man, because, you know, Stanton's a big dude, and he's not fast, and he hits home runs. You got to, like, know your role, and I feel like he's going outside his role here. I feel like it hurts the Yankees. I feel like it hurts the Yankees. You and Jenks together, that's trouble. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Man, just, hey. Oh, boy. Oh boy, AJ, we do have a really good Niagara Falls story. We'll have to tell you on the side one day. Oh man, <laughs> I, I got the ultimate Niagara Falls story with Octavia Dotel. We'll tell that off the air one day too. But <laughs> I don't know if you played with Dotel, but he was one of a kind. Uh-uh. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Yankees, they traded for another of your favorites, Alex Verdugo. Do you think he's going to lose weight once he shaves his beard, and we also stop criticizing his managers after he gets traded? <laughs> yeah, you know, I think. Um, for me, when, you know, when are the Yankees going? Are they going to continue doing this like facial hair rule forever, man? I think I've never really been a fan of it, but um, he definitely doesn't look the same. That's 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 for sure. But to me, um, you know, when I came up in the big leagues, you don't leave somewhere and just blow up everybody after you leave. Um, Man, I, I got a little pissed about that, but, you know, and it's not just because I played with Alex Cora or Alex Cora is a friend of mine. It has nothing to do with it. It's, it has everything to do with the baseball gods and the, and the way baseball is. And I thought it was a bitch move. Yeah, there we go. And so um, you don't leave somewhere and then, you know, call out everybody. Look, man, I did 30 games with Nesson last year and I'm, and I'm ho- and I'm doing like pregame, and this dude would come at the same time that I showed up to the field, 
and some like charger, you know, rev his engine up and look at everybody. I'm here at the park. Look at me. You know what I mean? And you're late. Like nobody wants to play with those kind of players. Nobody wants to play with them. And I think, unfortunately, last year in the Red Sox clubhouse, they didn't necessarily have that guy to say, hey, Alex, quit this shit. We're all in this together. And if you want to be like that, you, we don't need you. And so I think he more or less rode himself out of town. So do you think do you think you can find that person? Do you think the Red Sox need to go out and find that person being a Nesson personality that you are? Do yeah, you think 100%. they need to go out and find that guy? 100% Kratzy. Um, to me, the culture has to change. Um, I've always been a big, big believer that culture eats analytics for breakfast, man. It, it, and I've always believed that. And, and, you know, analytics are great. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that culture in that clubhouse, um, you look at the Michigan guys, man. They had that culture. I, I mean, you know, they just won a national championship. I, I believe that goes a long way, man. And – you know, you're not always going to get along, but you all have to be pulling on the same rope to be successful. And when you have one guy that's not pulling on the rope, you just don't win. All right, so how do they change it? Who changes it? Because they have Alex Cora, who's won a World Series, right? Veritex in there every day grinding with them. They got some guys that have been around. Devers has been around a little while. I mean, he's the only one I think left from 18 when they won last. But how do they change it? Does it start with the player? Does, Alex Cora's not going to change what he's done. He's been successful. So, so who, who changes this culture that you need to change? To me, it starts with one person, Raphael Devers. And I think that he has the ability to, number one, speak English. And I think that he's been learning to speak English because, AJ, I feel like that's a big part of it, man. You ask David, you ask Manny, you know, you come from these other – you got to speak English if you want to become a leader – and I think he's working on his English, and I think he wants to become a leader. Um, but also, too, you're going to have – you know, Breslow, his new job and being this GM and to try to create this culture, um, he's going to have to find the right guys that mix well together. And, and to me, um, I don't know if he's doing this, but, you know, it's happened in my career where, you know, Certain GMs go to certain players and say, hey, what do you think about this guy? We're looking at this guy. How do you think he could fit in? And, and I'm sure those, those conversations are happening. But um, to me, you, it, I, I don't know that correct, perfect answer to how to change that, AJ, but something has to happen. Is there too much? Is there too much? You, you kind of mentioned on the analytics side. Is there too much of that and not enough fight? Like in your tweet, you said – I would hit this guy for our team. Yeah. Is there is there not enough that rewarded in the game right now in general, not just the Red Sox? I agree. I agree. Even even when I was still playing, you know, I had instances where, you know, Scherzer was pitching and you know, I know he I, I and it was our time to, you know, kind of retaliate and I know he wanted to, but just I, he didn't get the chance to, so I had to come in the game. The game's on the line and and I retaliated, and fortunately, we still got the, the dub that night, but he specifically came up to me. He's like, hey, that's the last time that's going to happen. That's my bad. You should not have to come into the game and pit and do my dirty work. So, um, I, you know, the game's evolving still, and, and I don't know how players these days um, do that. But, you know, Kratz, uh, to me, shit, man, it's you, – you have to be able to have that or you just don't win, man. You, you it's just – it's a give and take in the big leagues to me, you know. And, and and when you get to the big leagues, you follow in suit and you start to learn and you see how the, the, the game is played and whether that team accepts you or not, you know. And so if you're not pulling on that same chain, then you're not going to be accepted in the clubhouse. And to me, that clubhouse is a very, very sacred, sacred place. And so what goes on in that clubhouse and those guys that are in it, have to come together, and you have to have the right mix for that to happen. And I think that's Breslow's main concern is getting in guys that play a certain way. Pap, didn't they have that with – I mean, now he's a free agent again, but Justin Turner – and I've known Devers for years. I, I think he's like – I mean this in a good way, a teddy bear. He's like best vibes, just happy, you know, guy you go to to kind of get a smile. I don't know if he's like going to – 
scream at a guy or, or yell at him. I don't know if that's his style. I, I think JT no. probably would fit that bill more. He did that with the Dodgers. Yeah, and you're right, and you're right. And everybody leads in different ways. There's no question about that. I mean, he's not going to be a Dustin Pedroia and yell at everybody or, you know, somebody like that. I mean, you have a, a leader – like a Veritech who's quiet and leads up. You have some that are vocal. Everybody has their own leaders in certain, you know, different ways. I mean, I, I, I thought Roy Halladay was a great leader for our pitching staff and the way he went about it and, and did, didn't say a word hardly. He just showed it by his actions. So, you know, uh, Devers is, to me, the guy. He's the guy now, okay? And when you are the guy and you're getting paid like the guy, with that comes expectations, right? Well, it's just like, you know, a lot of people used to say, you know, J.D. Drew, one of the best talented left-handed hitters you could see, but didn't give a shit, didn't care, had no motivation, made $150 million and made one all-star game. So that, that didn't work in our clubhouse. And so if you find those guys that can't, be a part of what you're trying to create, then you can't bring them in. Yankees are trying to win a World Series. They brought in Verdugo. Is this going to hamper them, or do they have people over there that can can snap them up, can get them to the park on time, like you were saying? You know, um, that's a great question, Kratz. Um, you know, I think at the big league level, there's certain players, and we've all played with them, right? You can either tell them something, or they can tell you to kiss my ass. I'm making $80 million this year. And whether or not he's one of those guys, I don't know. But I do know one thing. I don't want him on my team. I don't want somebody that shows up late every day that doesn't care, that really plays for himself. So to me – I don't want that guy on my team. Now, can that work in New York? Yeah, it could work. But it's probably going to be a whole lot more to go involved to make it work. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. All right. You're, you've obviously been in – you follow the Red Sox. You played for the Red Sox for a long time. What does full throttle mean to you? And are the Red Sox going full <laughs> throttle? <laughs> Pap is full yeah. throttle. You know, I just actually got off of a uh, – a Zoom with the Nesson executives about 10 minutes ago, and uh, I asked them about full throttle. But what did they you know, say? Man, I, what I, what I did these guys Warner would have never said that, number one, because you know, you, you build expectations, and when you have a fan base like the Red Sox and you build an expectation and you don't follow it through, then all of a sudden, you know, shit starts to hit the fan. Um, to me, this year. They did not go full throttle. We all know that. Um, the Dodgers went full throttle. The Yankees went through full throttle. Two teams you're going to have to compete with. So, to me, they're going to have to create a major, major impact at the trade deadline this year, if they're in it still. And they may not be in it. They may not have the talent this year to be in it. Um Right now, I see them on the cusp as a wild card team, and I mean on the cusp, unless things change. Um, and, and that's a coin toss to me, whether or not they're going to make the playoffs. What do you think of what's gone on here with some of their attempts at signing guys? I know they got Giolito. They shipped out Sale, who we just had on the other day. Um, but it seems like they keep popping up from the insiders going, Red Sox were in on this player, too. But their offer wasn't good enough. Like, is that it's all even bullshit. real? It's all bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it's all. You know, Scratch, Scratch is shaking his head too. It's all bullshit, man. They they say that to 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 keep the 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 faith. But man, you know, I like the sale deal. You know, I think I think sale will work out in, in Atlanta because sometimes you know it just takes a change of scenery. It does, and I think if if sale still stays healthy, he'll have a good year. Um, but Lucas Giolito, I like. I like Giolito. I played with Giolito. Now he was a, a rookie and a very, very timid rookie when he came up. Um, and, you know, didn't impress me as a rookie. But you know, two years later, started to really impress me. So hopefully, he's found a few things out. You know, what concerns me is I found out that he's a big um, gamer. 
Like he's he's a he's a big gamer. And like he he said that he plays himself on the video game before he starts every day. And then <laughs> what's wrong with that? Did y'all hear this? He's visualizing the moment. Yeah, that's what he said. And I was like, man, you talking about video games versus big league hitters? <laughs> so you're saying the, the video game. games aren't realistic? Yeah, right. So kind of, and he was even getting involved. He's like, yeah. You know, my slider was good one year, so and I knew I had to use my slider against the twins. So I was, I played against the twins, and I used my slider. I'm like, man, dude, I, that's the only thing that kind of worried me about him. I, <laughs> I had a question for you, but I didn't know you were going to go there. You were playing video games. You were playing some overseas video games. When you were playing your your phone video games, you were putting. You're putting lines on tennis video games. So we all have yeah, but no, but I'm not basing this on how I'm going to go pitch <laughs> against the team the next day. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, all right, all right. So my question is going to be, you, you know, they're full throttle. I made the joke earlier. Maybe it's more like they're fools, full throttle, like F-O-O-L. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what could change your mind? Is there? Is there – Free agents, and I say free agents because there's not one that's going to change your mind, but if they sign these two guys that are left, you're like, hmm, okay, I see what you're doing. Because you you were on, it was either on when you did your Legends or when we did the when we did the game, you were like, hey, this guy wants to win. This ownership wants to win. Even though it doesn't maybe look like that, I know he wants to win. So those were your words. Yeah. What would change your mind if they make if it make these moves? Because this isn't a Breslow or a Hein Bloom thing. This is a ownership thing. Yeah, this is a Kennedy thing. This is um Sam Kennedy. And and so to me, Kratz and, and, and AJ, you 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 well know this by being behind the dish, man. If they don't go out, like I okay, so I'll say this much. If Brian Bayo is a two or a three starter, a number two or a number three. And they go out and get somebody to be a number one, they'll be okay. But I said, okay, that means they still got work to do, man. They still got a lot of work to do, in my opinion. And that work has to carry through the season and into the trade deadline if they're within two or three games, you know? Where well, are like they right now? Kid, but Where are they right now in your mind? Um, the Sox, if you rank them in the division, and what do they have no. to do to be playoff relevant? I know you started mentioning Montgomery. I, I would hope they're going to look at someone like that. He'd be great in that rotation. Yeah, I, I think he's right now their best option um, to me. You know, left-handed, pitching in Fenway Park, you know, it's a poke to right. You can live down and away. You can sink the ball all day long in Fenway Park as a lefty. Um, so, to me, going out and getting a bona fide left-handed number one starter instantly puts them back in the conversation, in my opinion. Now, that just puts them in the conversation. They still got plenty of work to do, in my opinion. And like I said, it has to continue, and they're going to have to be make a major impact in the trade deadline. And they got to keep the um, the uh, the other Japanese player. I'm sorry, I forget his name. The left Yoshida. Yoshida. Yoshida San. Yoshida San. Yeah, you got to keep him. They're talking about getting rid of him. Can't let him go, dude. He's got a pure swing for for Fenway Park as a left-handed hitter. Only reason why David Ortiz became so successful. AJ will tell you that. Fab, I got you. I got you a number. You love numbers. Bet MGM right now, I'm making this up, but Bet MGM right now has 84 and a half wins. Where are you going? Right now? Right now. Under. No question. That might change if they, you know, sign Montgomery and but right now under, man. And I and I think that'd be a pretty safe bet. I mean, minus at, at what 85 and a half games at minus 110, I'll take that all day. I mean, really, just like the Stanton deal. I mean, uh, you know, I I love the gamble, man. But, you know, not everything is is um, an exact science. But there's some 
pretty tall tales in here about uh, Kratz winning damn near 90 games in the American League East is not going to be easy this year, my friend. The Baltimore oh. Orioles have got a damn squad. Are you? Are they the tops right now? Are they your pick to win I the like division? I like the Orioles, bro. Are I they do. the pick? I, I'll go with the Orioles, yeah. I could, and you know why? Because I can guarantee you right now, if Vegas probably has a, a – it won't be out until probably after spring training or during spring training, but they're going to be plus six, seven, eight hundred to win the American League East. I mean, why not take that, man? That's – I mean, they – this Adley Rushman kid, dude, is – impresses me more and more. I mean, just, just the way their club – the, the, just the, you can see when guys play, man, when they play together or they don't play together. And this team, man, the Orioles play together. Pat, you've seen what the Dodgers have done, right, obviously with all their moves. The Red Sox have all the money in the world. Why the fuck don't the Red Sox make these kind of moves? Why don't they go out and – Spend some of the money they're paying you to be on Nesson for 30 games. Ooh, that's big money. Yeah, well, they're not paying me that much, man. So Come uh, on, man. Don't do that. Don't do so, that. I, Are they paying you or Johnny Gomes more? Well, I know that Nesson made uh, $100 million last year, so I'm going to try and get some chunk of that this year. <laughs> get it. But, um, you know, to me, I think that, you know, John Henry and in his ownership group, man, they have, you know, the soccer team, the NASCAR team, the baseball teams, and I think a few other teams. But they all had their own ways, and, 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 and he gives each one of those teams X amount of dollars to spend. And I don't, I don't know how much that is with the Red Sox this year. Um, I'd, I'd have to say it's going to have to be sign one more guy, make it about $120 million payroll but this year but god damn man i don't know dude i i wish they would spend more but you know i don't know where they're at i can't i can't honestly, are they the new raise honest answer on that hey are the red sox now the raise that's they why they brought the in bloom initially well that that's yeah a that's a great point oh. aj that's what bloom did man yeah but bloom did exactly what he was told to do exactly. trade Nuki and make the farm system good and then they yeah. shit-canned him for Breslow. And I love yeah. Breslow, but, I mean, Hein Bloom did exactly what they asked. Get the payroll down. Get rid of Mookie Betts. I mean, Mookie okay, Betts will so, look pretty good in a Red Sox uniform, maybe playing second base. Okay, so that's that is um, that's kind of cliche Red Sox kind of way, you know. So uh, even going back to the days of Theo, uh, when, when we kind of fell apart there in 10 and 11 – you know, everything wanted to get blamed on Theo. You know, we signed J.D. Drew, bad sign. Carl Crawford, bad sign. Adrian Gonzalez, bad sign. And then they they ship them all out after that. And the, I think Beckett was part of that deal, too. I can't remember all of them. But, you know, it's always the finger pointing. And nobody in today's you know wants to take blame. And I get it, man. But they hire those people to take those blames. And I think Bloom was just the scapegoat. Simply. Um, by the way, I've got your actual odds. This is out already. MGM has the AL East odds. Yankees plus 140. Orioles plus 290. Blue Jays plus 350. Rays plus 700. Red Sox plus 1,000. Yeah. So yeah. Vegas, let me tell you something. Vegas has more analytics than all of us. They have more analytics than every <laughs> baseball team out there. They have more information than every baseball out there. So if Vegas is saying the Red Sox are coming in last place, they've got some pretty damn good info of why. Yep. But I like the I Orioles, agree. man. To, at plus 300, let them lose a few games at the beginning of the season. They'll be at plus 400, and I'll take them. I like that. Hey, I want to change gears with you for one sec. Um, Adrian Beltre is going to get elected into the Hall of Fame in like a week and a half. What was he like? As a fucking I know awesome, he's man. still alive. Yeah, man. He's <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Come on, dude. You just said that the other day, didn't you? To Todd? Yeah, Todd goes, awesome man, he was, a, he was something. And I'm like, he didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's awesome, man. I, I couldn't be more happy for him. I, he, one of my favorite guys to play with, man, just literally played hurt. I mean, I think the year I played with him, he had like a slap tear in his ACL the whole year. And so, to me, those guys, man, 
You know, that's why I like I like I like grinders, man. Kratzy and AJ and you know the bell trays, the grinders that you know. Man, I, that's that's who I want to play with. Hey, Pat. Just so you know, Kratz won't allow us to be grinders. You and I or Beltre, because we didn't spend twelve years in the minor leagues grinding. You have to be on oh, Kratz's. <clears throat> yeah, true. so you have to understand Kratz's different different definition of grinding. Like when you yeah. show up and play every day, you take the ball when they ask for it every time. That's not considered grinding. You didn't spend enough time in the minor leagues. No, no, that that is grinding. You're not grinders. Big difference. Mm. That's grinding. He grind. He was grinding through an ACL slap. Oh, one's slap plural tear. and one's not. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, mm. Professor okay. Pat. Mrs. I played State. against Kratzy in the old minor leagues, the Fisher Cats. No, even before that, the Lowell Spinners. Oh, yeah, even before that. When we blasted yeah. you guys. Oh, yeah. I think I got drunk every night I pitched with the Lowell's because I was fresh out of college. I had like a 70 yeah. RA. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely. There's some stories, again, off camera that you told me about that start. But anyway, continue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, AJ. look, man, to me, at the end of the day, if if the Red Sox, and, and, I, and I'll be working for them again this year with Nesson, but if the Red Sox um, do not go out and get – and you're relying on Brian Bayo to be your number one, they're going to be in big trouble. Hey, I like Brian Bayo. He gets me a lot of strikeout props on Ben MGM. So, hey, let's not, let's not bang on Brian, <laughs> Brian Bayo too much every time Lucy Birch comes on. <laughs> It was Brian Bayo day, and we always bet on him. He usually won for us. So yeah, he was a good. Let, let's take it a little bit. And I agree with everything you said about Beltre. I played with Beltre in 2013. He was unbelievable. He was awesome. I played against him yeah. in the minor leagues. Played against him in the big leagues, and I got to play with him for a year. He was, he's a special guy. I couldn't be happier for yeah. a guy. He deserves to yeah. be in. Family, awesome, great guy. Contro control. He talked about controlling a clubhouse. He controlled a clubhouse better oh. than anyone I've ever been around. And and, and, and he controlled. And I tell people this, and it's and, and and this is honestly, he controlled the Latin guys better, and he could he could just look at anybody and just be like, "That's not the way to do it." And every which, single which guy AJ, was like, you'll tell, you, yes. "You can, you can, you can relate to this, man. It, 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 you have all kind of demographics and all different ways of life, and people come from every different way of life. But if you can have someone that can control the Latin guys, can control the white guys." You know the brothers are going to be together, and you got to all kind of melt together. Man, that's a winning recipe. I agree. Belcher is the best I ever seen. He got along with everybody, did everything. He, he's the man. So, a guy that hasn't been the man lately. I got to know your opinion on this. Is is Trevor Bauer? Will Trevor Bauer pitch again in the major leagues? Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say yes. Um, just, I, I don't know how all those court proceedings done. I think he's done with them, right? Is he done? I think he's got he, one more. He, or at least he, because he's speaking out a lot now. I believe he said he has one yeah, more that he couldn't yeah. talk about that's still ongoing. Yeah. So, so he, so the other one they, they met outside of court, right? They agreed outside of court. So I'm assuming this other wacko, whoever he's dealing with, is going to agree out of court as well. And, to me, um, if these wacko women that are claiming all this and that against him, okay, if they're going to settle outside of court, doesn't that just tell you something? Doesn't that just say, okay, well, they were just chasing money? To me, it does. So I think once he can get all that bullshit behind him, I think he's still got big league innings left in him. Well, okay. I will say, I don't know every single detail of what's gone on behind the scenes. I don't think any of us technically do of all of the combos. So, but my question is, do you think that, I mean, two people, it takes two to tango. Like there has to be a team that says, despite what's gone on and, and Bauer kind of was apologizing the other day too. He didn't really say what he was apologizing for, but you know, maybe clubhouse issues or whatever in the past, you know, of, of him as a player. Is there a team that's going to say, sure, he's got big league innings left in him, but is it worth bringing him on based on past issues and you know him going after random people on social media and reporters and all of that? Like, is it worth having him on? We we just talked about how certain guys are not worth playing with, so that's what I'm curious about. For, forget what's going on, you know. Not obviously, 
I, I just I can't speak to that well, right? The the court cases and all that. But just knowing the the what you're seeing on the outside and what he's done um, in his career as, as a teammate, is it worth having him on? And do you That's think a, a team great, will consider that? Great, great question, honestly. And I think that boils back down to okay, let's let's go back to. Um, what I said, you know, you discuss with the guys on your team. There's the certain leaders you discuss things and what direction you're trying to go with your team, right? So if Trevor Bauer is on my list, if I'm Craig Breslow and I'm looking at Trevor Bauer, I go to anybody that knows Trevor Bauer in that clubhouse, and I try to find out everything I can about him. Um, and, I, and I try to make my decision based on that, and I try to, you know, talk to some of the guys in the clubhouse about, maybe or possibly bringing him in. And then you get the pulse of the team and you feel how that, you know, goes. But, you know, to me, man, and I hate this, and I, and I hate it for him, honestly, because I truly do, I truly do feel like Trevor Bauer is innocent. And, and I could be dead wrong. I've seen this before, though, and I could be dead wrong. But he got involved with the wrong woman, and apparently said she liked to be beat and, and hit and this and that. And that's what she liked, apparently. And he did that. And then all of a sudden, oh, I don't like that. And now you beat me up. And, you know, so I feel like there's a certain type of like a, there's a, you know, there's a snake in there to me. So I, I don't know, man. And, and, and I feel like if I'm a GM, I'm definitely going to ask him about every single bit of it before I sign him. And I'm going to know everything I can. So... But as a pitcher and as a player and as an athlete, I most certainly believe he has big league potential still and big league outs and big league innings. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly making the rounds now publicly to speak out. and try Yeah, and, get and I mean, to... this happens, guys. I mean, let's be honest, bro. This is not just in baseball. This shit happens all over every sport from Ray Rice on down – and every year, there's some type of domestic shit that happens, right? We, we get talked about it in spring training. You know, this is what you got to do and blah, blah, blah. So this goes on. So to me, um, he just, you know, got put in a, a, a bad situation and, and, and was taken advantage of, in my opinion. So, um, I mean, I've, I've had teammates like this before. I had one teammate, shit, it seemed like every city we went to, he was like, eh, got to go to court. I'm like, I'll be late today. I got to go to court. You know, some girl. Uh, so, I mean, this happens, man. Fair. Fair. We'll Real see what happens. Real world. Real world shit going down. Yeah, we got a, we got a bunch of messy situations in the game right now. So, all right, Pop. Give them, give them a, don't get too much of a raise from Nesson, though. They need that. They, they got about three <laughs> players left to sign, all right? Man, Otherwise, hey, that look, plus 1,000 ain't you, going man. anywhere. For a while there, you know, I was kind of like, fuck baseball. But, you know, I, I thank God I'm back in it. And um, I really do love and enjoy the game and the people that are involved with it. Y'all are doing a hell of a job with this podcast, man. And keep it up. And uh, hopefully we'll have a great season this year, man. Lots of uh, fireworks. Appreciate you. Yeah. We still got to get about half the free agents signed. So they got about a yeah, month to like, figure why that, does that out. Keep, why does that keep backing up every year? There's a agents? lot of theories on that. Nobody can tell you. I mean, everyone said it, it was Shohei. Is, 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 is it because it everybody's Yamamoto? Yamamoto. Yeah, yeah it's nobody's fault. That was Boris. That was Boris. See, uh, I don't know. It's a good question. I think stalemates. I think it's just stalemates. You know? You don't think there's any collusion with the agents? With the Ooh. agents? No, oh, uh, mm. I like your style. I think it's. But I don't I think, think so. The, but. No, I. I that, yeah, I'm, I can agents. be kind of a conspiracy theorist at times, but. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe in Sasquatch, but. I mean, yeah, but do I believe. Come on, you know. come on! You think all the agents are friends? I can tell you for a fact they're they not. not. No, they <laughs> they are not. They're not. No. no, I can but tell I you the, the owners are much closer hungry. friends than the agents. I can say that with utmost confidence that they will all hang out together and the agents would ha would be better in a uh, celebrity MMA match. Yes, yes, especially over players. Yes, exactly. 
Well, good, dude. We're going to catch you again soon. Obviously, appreciate okay, you guys. joining us and, and what we're doing here. Just bringing some, bringing some real talk to the game. Get your boys in Boston going a little bit. And we'll catch you yeah, soon, man, all right? Yeah, I love it. Y'all keep up the good work, man. Good to see y'all.